Hi guys! As you've probably gleaned from the title, today we're going to be talking about Mermaid High. Uh, more specifically, its imminent cancellation and the current conversation surrounding it. But there is really only one place to start this discussion, and that is at the very beginning. Can I keep a secret? We're living in two worlds. Mermaid, Mermaid High. If you're unfamiliar, Mermaid High is a doll line that was launched by the toy company Spin Master in fall of 2021. Spin Master is also notable for past doll lines such as La Di Da, Liv. The concept is pretty simple. It revolves around four friends who are mermaids. The dolls could be changed from mermaid to human thanks to their removable fabric tails. They had very long brushable hair and a storyline that involved these characters attending a human high school, confusingly named Mermaid High, while attempting to pass off as human and hide their mermaid identities. The four main characters featured in the first lineup were Ciara, who was sophisticated, glamorous, and fashionable, Mari, the edgier, sarcastic goth girl, Finley, the sweet boho vegan, and Oceana, the sporty, competitive one. Pretty standard character archetypes you've probably seen a hundred times if you've collected dolls for a while or just engaged with the media like this in any way, but Mermaid High's concept really carried it in my opinion. It was very much riding the waves of Monster High, and I don't just mean the name. It was fun, it was colorful, the character designs were incredibly distinct and charming, it didn't take itself too seriously. It featured incredibly cheesy puns like Ciara's style being described as sophisticated glam and Mari having a pet shark named Sharkira. When the dolls launched, I wouldn't say they were incredibly popular. It's hard to say exactly how well they were doing with kids, but among collectors, I would say the initial reactions were pretty negative. With MGA's Rainbow High and LOL OMG already on shelves and really pushing the limits of what fashion dolls could accomplish, Mermaid High just seemed somewhat limited in comparison. Although they did technically have two outfits if you count their fishtails and human outfits, their articulation was limited, their facial screenings weren't executed as well as some other dolls, and the quality overall just didn't feel like it matched the initial launch price of uh, around $30. The outfits featured printed on details opposed to constructed ones, and often the materials used were on the cheaper side. However, once the dolls actually rolled out and the company also launched an accompanying short form animated webisode series, it managed to build itself a relatively decent fan base. People who were buying the dolls seemed to like them well enough, myself included, and the brand's YouTube channel pulled in an adequately large subscriber and viewer base for an unestablished doll line. If you want my opinion on the dolls, I thought they were pretty neat. Including mermaids at all is an incredibly easy way to get on my good side, but overall I did think the dolls were well executed. I thought the character designs were really fun, I loved the friendships and dynamics featured in the animated series, and the quality honestly didn't bother me that much, because I know a company like Spin Master doesn't necessarily have the resources and funding that some of its competition does, and I love to see doll lines on the market that aren't just MGA or Mattel. I love seeing more variety on the shelves. So certain things, personally, I could excuse and just enjoy this fun, campy doll line about a group of cool mermaid girls. That's all I really needed. However, it wasn't too long after the launch of the first wave of dolls that certain issues were starting to be noticed. Trouble in paradise, if you will. Shortly after Mermaid High was launched, MGA began preparing to launch their own mermaid-themed fashion doll, Mermaids Mermaids. The official release of Mermaids was not until around March of 2022, but leaks, teasers, and promo materials started popping up a few months prior. There were suspicions floating around that this was a deliberate move on MGA's part to compete with Mermaid High, but I do honestly think that given the amount of time both of these lines would have to spend in production, this was mostly a coincidence. Mermaid High actually spent an unusually long time in production prior to release, maybe much longer than Mermaid's, but we'll get to more of that later. It is entirely possible that MGA caught some wind of a Mermaid doll line being launched soon and wanted to cash in on it themselves, the doll industry is pretty shady and cutthroat in that way, but there's no way to say for sure. 
Now, Mermaids Mermaids has a starkly different aesthetic to Mermaid High. The characters are more realistic, they're more glamorous and contemporary, and their tails are molded plastic, not removable like Mermaid High's. Mermaids also seems to be aimed at a slightly older demographic, with the dolls being more fragile, stationary, and less inclined for rougher play. I think that both lines are different enough that they aren't exactly strong competition for each other outside just being mermaids. But Mermaids did highlight a lot of Mermaid High's admittedly inferior quality issues if you did compare the two. In early 2022, Mermaids launched their second line, Spring Break. This was a more budget line, priced around $20, and featured the characters in swimsuits rather than complete outfits. Oceana, Finley, and Ciara were included alongside a new character named Rainy. Or is it Rainia? Raina? who dressed in a nerdy gamer girl kind of aesthetic. Very notably, main character Mari was missing, but it's not uncommon for doll lines to switch out characters here and there, so it wouldn't really be anything worth mentioning, except for the fact that a few other future lines began to leak onto the internet. First, there was a prom-themed line planned. This would feature, again, Oceana, Finley, and Ciara, alongside a new character named Zinya. There was also a two-pack featuring the human male character Josh, who was previously seen in the animated series, and a mystery female character. Likely either Ciara or Oceana as a way to mimic the fact the animation had a, a love triangle plot between the characters. Honestly, a very clever concept for a surprise doll, but notably, Mari was nowhere in sight. Then, there was a slumber party line featuring the characters in pajamas. Again, there was Oceana, Finley, and Ciara, and a new character named Holly. Yet again, Mari didn't seem to make the cut. In every line, she seemed to be completely replaced with a new character. After three times, it clearly wasn't a coincidence. This, to me, was the first indication that something was going on in Mermaid High's production. It's easy to see why, if Spin Master wanted to cut a character from the lineup, it would be Mari. She's the edgiest and most alternative of the main cast, something that I imagine didn't fly over well with executives of a toy company. There's this common misconception among people who run these companies that girls, or people who buy dolls in general I should say, are only interested in pink and sparkles and traditionally feminine Barbie adjacent aesthetics and nothing else will sell. Despite, well, pretty much two decades worth of evidence to the contrary. However, neither the prom line nor the slumber party line would see a release. The Mermaid High YouTube channel released the finale of the series on April 2nd, 2022, and quietly stopped uploading new episodes, or any indication that there would be another season. There was no news of any upcoming doll releases, and although no official statement has been released by Spin Master thus far, the writing on the wall was pretty clear. Mermaid High had been cancelled. Now, if you're at all familiar with Spin Master as a company, this honestly did not come as a complete shock. They're fairly well known for having a pretty terrible division when it comes to their girls department and cancelling their doll lines if they're not an immediate smash success. Like Lottie Daw, which also barely lasted a year. Or, if the line is fairly successful at launch, like Liv was in 2009, then cancelling and abandoning the line at just the first sign of dwindling sales. Overall, Spin Master is just not well known for having the most amazing business practices when it comes to the fashion doll market. In the wake of its cancellation, one of the designers who worked on Mermaid High, Stephen Sumner, took to Instagram to air out some grievances with Mermaid High's production, as well as share some of the initial prototypes of the dolls. According to Sumner, the original concept for Mermaid High had a completely different aesthetic. The faces featured larger, more expressive eyes, and the clothes overall were edgier and more experimental. Ciara, for instance, had a furry leopard print halter top and clear thigh-high fishnet boots. Mari had a more daring hairstyle and heavier makeup. Finley was incredibly colorful and sparkly. And though it's not said, I'm curious if she was intended to have a more kind of Harajuku-inspired aesthetic, but for being altered to be more of a beachy boho girl. Oceana, however, was more or less very similar to her final design. 
Although I did like the final product we got with Mermaid High, I think these prototypes are awesome. I would have loved to see what they would have been like had they gone into production like this. Unfortunately, the higher ups at Spin Master weren't too pleased with these. In Sumner's post, he says that management decided that the faces looked too old and were redesigned to be more childlike but that wasn't the end of it. In another comment, Sumner says that Spin Master had them redesign Mermaid High several times. The company was so unsatisfied with their work that they eventually brought in an outside designer whose work they were ordered very strictly to follow. And to quote Sumner, even the outside designer commented that the fun had been taken out of the line when they saw the final product. This was a process that took so long that it delayed the release of Mermaid High to the point that it frustrated retailers. By the time Mermaid High was finally able to be shipped out, stores had no love for the line, often refusing to give it proper shelf space or promotion. Spin Master 2 seemed to have very little faith in the line as there was very little advertising or promotion done on their part as well. And by the time the Spring Break line was shipped out, future orders were cancelled. Mermaid High was a uh, sleeping with the fishes. And all of this kind of factors into a broader conversation about toy companies, rather doll companies specifically, not having faith in their designers. Mermaid High was altered and changed several times to be as broadly marketable and consumer friendly as possible, and even then Spin Master still wasn't satisfied. They still completely removed the one character who had any inch of alternative fashion. I really sympathize with the Mermaid High design team. I come from a design background too. I know what it's like to have your work be at the whims of other people's sensibilities. But what gets me is how these companies not only refuse to have any faith in their designers' works, but also refuse to look outside their own ideas of what is successful. Garrett Sander, the creator of Monster High, has frequently posted about his battles with Mattel while working on Monster High and what they considered to be marketable. For instance, in the initial prototypes of Monster High, Frankie Stein doesn't have green skin. Management told him, plainly, Girls don't like the color green. Fortunately, when the products were tested, the children were confused as to why the character based on Frankenstein wasn't green and Mattel relented. And that seemed to be a recurring theme throughout Monster High's run. A doll can't have a pixie cut because girls don't like short hair. The daughter of the Grim Reaper can't have a scythe because it's too violent. Cat scratch makeup deemed too scary. Spectra of Ondergeist face mold too creepy. And some level of corporate interference is to be expected, especially when it comes to things like cost and budget, but despite Monster High being a smash success and Garrett and the rest of the extremely talented design team proving that they know what the market wants, there was still pushback to tone down the designs, make them more quote unquote marketable. I know that this whole conversation is kind of beyond me, that producing a doll line is an expensive venture and it makes sense that companies would want to play it safe if possible, produce something that in their minds is going to sell the best. And yet, historically, the doll lines that have been the most successful, that run more than just a few years, are the ones that take risks, that have designs that are edgy, experimental, even controversial. Like I said, we have several decades worth of evidence to that fact. More to that, these designers are the ones who are actually in this world. They're the ones that love dolls. At least, hopefully, they do. They know, instinctually, what people look for in dolls. They're a part of this market that these companies want to appeal to. So, really, this video is just a plea for whatever executive bigwigs that make these decisions to trust their designers. Let them experiment, respect their work, you have everything to gain from it. Because in the case of Mermaid High, taking the time to redesign and redo a doll line to be more marketable, to be safer, really isn't as safe as it looks. I mean, obviously, it was an actual disaster for them. Had the dolls been produced to look more like the prototypes? No, I can't guarantee that they would have been more successful. I mean, they probably would have released on time, for one. 
but they also may have struck a chord with a lot more people. Like I said, I liked Mermaid High because I enjoyed the variety, and despite all the interference from Spin Master, I could still see that a lot of love and effort went into producing these dolls. And that's something very important to me, and had I seen the original vision on shelves, I probably would have felt that even more strongly, and I really doubt I'm alone in that. I hope that maybe this was a learning experience for the folks at Spin Master. I hope that moving forward they give their designers more freedom and have more faith in their work. And for anyone watching this, I hope it gives more insight into the production process of dolls, of what designers have to deal with to get their work onto shelves and how that process isn't always very pretty. So it's important for us as consumers to have respect for them as well. And I guess that's all I really have to say. I wanted to make this video because I liked Mermaid High, I had high hopes for it, and it's also rare that we get this kind of insight into a doll line's production process and exactly why it was cancelled. So I hope this was interesting, I hope you learned something. Be sure to comment down below, tell me what you thought of Mermaid High, if you liked the prototypes better, if you would have liked the line more if it was closer to the original concept. And when you're done with that, be sure to like and subscribe for any future fashion doll content. Thank you!